Do 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 do. What's up, everybody? Cinema recap here today, and we're gonna talk about Inspector Gadget. Spoilers ahead. You know, we all loved Inspector Gadget growing up, and this is supposed to be the cinematic version. Hopefully, it's good enough. And as typical, John Brown is dreaming again. For clarity, he's the man who will tentatively be transformed into Inspector Gadget later on. And yes, he's desperate to become a police officer, which is one level closer to becoming Inspector Gadget, as you'll soon see. More specifically, he's dreaming of saving an entire bus full of children from crashing into another group of children crossing the road with a single dog. And sure as hell, he aces it. And just when Brenda, who is his undying crush, has given him a kiss for his heroism as the model officer of the town, he wakes up to his dog named Brain, licking him. Ah, he recoils in disgust. His niece Penny's there, however, to console him. He's half trying to become a cop because of her. This is so he can impress her friends and, by extension, elevate Penny's status at school. It's not the badge, it's the heart behind it. For now, he's only a security guard at a research facility. Now inside, Brenda and her father are still working late. They're trying to animate a foot, or in other words, cause it to move by mind control. But it doesn't work. Not until Brenda's father, named Artemis, uses his heart, and not his head, literally. And when it does, they celebrate their success and are very happy. It's animated by will, not by thought. Brenda has excused herself to go take care of an errand, all the while Brown is observing her on his security cam footage. It's a crush thing, and soon he excuses himself from his command post to go catch up with Brenda before she leaves. Catching up to her, he introduces himself and tries to engage in small talk. He mentions the beautiful stars, but she's thinking of something more academic like star clusters and such. Truth be told, he wasn't thinking that far. She eventually says that she forgot her keys at the office, so she tracks back there, leaving him to contemplate on his admiration for her and why he couldn't tell her about it. Meanwhile, Skolex lurks in the shadows of his limo with his henchman named Sykes. They've been watching Brenda remotely. Skolex is a competitor and wants to steal that tech Brenda and her father have been working on, case in point. So with the help of Sykes, he drives a parked van by remote control and goes after Artemis. The van crashes into the building at high speed, and from inside, three robots are unleashed. Aside from taking the tech away, they also snuff out Artemis all by remote control from the limo parked a good distance away. When Brown gets there, he sees damage and death, and so vows to bring justice to Brenda. Justice will be served. He gets into his old hatchback and gives chase to the limo and van. Well, Sykes sees him coming and releases some grease on the road, and so Brown crashes and flips the hatchback. As a final flourish, Skolex tosses dynamite towards Brown, and it blows that hatchback up. But there's a twist. A bowling ball is propelled into the air and ends up crushing Skolix's hand for good. Who can anyone survive what just happened to Brown? Well, whatever your answer, Penny the niece is paying him a visit at the hospital. And she brought Brain along, who seems excited to lick Brown on the lips again. And he's all covered in a full body cast hanging from all limbs so he can heal quicker. Soon enough, of all the people to pay him a visit, the mayor drops by with his police chief named Quimby. It seems they have found the right candidate for what Brenda and her father were working on, as it was sponsored by the town government. Brenda agrees to this too, and she's sure Brown will do. She just feels it deep down inside of her. And all that while they never think to ask Brown himself how he feels. But soon enough, they're already transforming him into something else without his consent. You see all sorts of tools and wiring going into his frame, aka Inspector Gadget. He'll make you obsolete. Meanwhile, Skolex has undergone some changes too. He went and replaced that crushed hand with a claw, and also gotten himself a new nickname. It's simply Claw. He goes on to introduce his own scientist to the stolen foot. Now Claw wants to try to reverse engineer the foot so as to crack its underlying functionalities and use it to develop even other tech he can cash in on. Back at the hospital, Brown wakes up as Inspector Gadget. And he's not feeling like himself. When his thumb is transformed into a lighter, He's thinking it's on fire. Or even worse, maybe he's hallucinating due to the recovery drugs. A missile even flies out of his ass and ricochets around the room. Fortunately, it doesn't harm anybody. Okay, technically it didn't come out his ass, but he has truly become Inspector Gadget. And he bumps into Brenda, who confirms it. He's now sort of a robotical police officer with enough tricks to catch the greatest criminal ever, namely the devil himself. Brenda reassures him that she'll guide him through the process of discovering his new self. 
And by now, his head has ejected and punctured through the roof. Good luck with that, Brenda. Now at Skolix's lab, they're testing their own robot using Brenda's research. Claw tries to mind control the robot, but it doesn't budge. I guess they have no heart. More so, they don't have the controlling chip Brenda calls a neuron synapse amplifier. Something got left behind. She's trying to explain to Inspector Gadget on how he works. Eventually, she brings out a manual, the height of a chair, literally, and also introduces him to a new wardrobe, which comprises of a special coat and hat. Brenda then takes him on a field test run. Actually, it's a literal field. And when she poses a challenge to him on how he might catch some runaway thieves, he says go go gadget as his magic words and tries to produce some grease. Instead, it's toothpaste that gushes out of his arm pipe. It's everywhere, all over Brenda, and we're all laughing. Now in order to control his electronic flaws better, Inspector Gadget is taken to see an Indian guru. They start the meditations and mantras together. Gadget's instructed to extend his arm as a gesture of understanding, but no. His arm goes way longer than it's supposed to, striking the guru between the thighs. And can you imagine a guru without his core? Well, he's quickly put into an ambulance and taken to the hospital. Hold in a nice bag of ice in his general area. Ah, poor guy. So up next, Brenda shows Inspector his new car. And she calls it the Gadget Mobile. And oh my word, it's as enthusiastic to fight crime as any of the new police trainee. It can work independently of Inspector Gadget if it wants to. Oh, it's a he. Excuse me? Now Inspector Gadget's finding it difficult to control it or knowing the right buttons to press. It gives him a hard time too with those taunting words. And yeah, you guessed right, it can talk up a storm. Soon enough, they both stumble upon two escaped prison inmates trying to steal a car. Well, Gadgetmobile gets the idea, but not really Inspector Gadget. He doesn't notice their prison uniforms or the fact that they're trying to hack the car. So he offers to help them get inside with a master key that comes out of his finger. Well, the Gadgetmobile is disappointed, but gets ahead by rolling out the cop lights. The perps run in different directions. One for each officer of the law. At least the gadget car thinks he's one. And somehow they're able to apprehend the criminals. And then praise and accolades follow. Before we go on, like the video, smash the subscribe button and turn on that notification bell to get that full day of good luck. Now the inspector is to be officially inducted into the police force at a special gala. The first Robocop to do so, assuming others will follow if Brenda is permitted to continue her research. Now, Skolex gets knowledge of the gala at his lair and is determined to crash that party. Inspector Gadget prepares for the night with the help of his niece. She's noticed he likes Brenda, and he admits to it. Is it that obvious? Well, Penny tells him he should simply be himself. So now we're at the gala, and Brenda offers to dance with Inspector Gadget, who's such a quick learner. But soon, Skolex interrupts and asks to take the dance from there. He introduces himself as having gone to Harvard. It's the same college Brenda went to. And as they're dancing, the inspector tries to eavesdrop on their conversation with a detachable ear. But this move backfires. When he meets up with Brenda again, she's excited. It seems Skolex has offered her a job that'll take her away from the Gadget Cop program. But what about your other research? Well, Inspector Gadget's sad. And just then, the mayor comes to whisk him away for a photograph with the rest of the police squad. He seizes the opportunity to ask Chief Quimby for a case he can crack. But he's only getting the bottom most cases instead. Like rescuing cats or being an automated speed cop. So now Gadget's looking for the Chief's audience to complain about being underutilized. And the Chief kind of dismisses this by saying he's not a real officer. Eh, he's probably jealous of Gadget's potential to replace real cops. And hence leave them jobless. Why don't you just about face and uh, get out of my office? So Gadget takes matters into his own hands, and he's able to find Artemis' murder file. That's Brenda's father's case. Meanwhile, Skolex, with the help of his scientist, has created his own Inspector Gadget, and it looks every inch like the real one. Except this one's into doing damage rather than help people. It even sets the police sign on fire. So Gadget found somewhere private to peruse the files, namely the toilet. He looks at the piece of metal found on the crime scene that simply says, "See." Si. Well, that's Spanish for yes. But Gadget dismisses that first impression as a false lead. And now he's driving the G-Mobile with Penny when a truck halts beside him. It has Skolex Industries painted on its side. Well, that's it. SI stands for Skolex Industries, all thanks to Penny's acronym decoding skills. Oh, no. This is when Gadget realizes Brenda might be in trouble. 
So he drives over to the Skolex building to warn Brenda. By saying go, go, gadget, he's able to materialize climbing hooks to scale the enormous skyscraper. And he sees Brenda through her office window, warning her before landing on a roof of that skyscraper into a vent. And while there, he discovers the original foot stolen by Skolex and tries to take it as evidence. But the alarm goes off and he's caught. We have a blader. Repeat. Brenda, on her part, had found a copy of herself that Skolex made. Now this copy accidentally tells Brenda about the stolen foot and she becomes furious. Now in the same building, Skolex is enjoying himself, showing or watching the fake gadget wreck havoc downtown. And Inspector Gadget had been tied down to a bed, opened up to reveal his innards. Well, Skolex has a bright idea. He doesn't want anybody getting the inspiration to create any more Inspector Gadgets. All he wants is the monopoly of being the only one who can do so. He's imagining government contracts for gadget military soldiers and such. And so he decides to rid Inspector Gadget of his primary processing chip. He pulls out that chip from his body and crushes it with his claw. Inspector Gadget then powers down and becomes a vegetable. Dump this idiot in the junkyard. Yes, boss. Brent is still looking for him, and no one can ascertain his whereabouts until the gadget mobile comes to their aid. It has a homing capability which Brenda uses to pinpoint the gadget's exact location. It leads him to a dumpster. The gadget in all his glory has actually been discarded in that manner. And while the copy had turned the town upside down with the inhabitants running for their lives. Penny goes on to find the real Inspector Gadget amongst the rubbish heap. It's a sad moment as both Penny and Brenda shed a tear or two. Brenda kisses the Inspector goodbye and just then, a miracle happens. His internal mechanisms jumpstart. And it looks like he doesn't need the chip to function. He only needs just his heart. And there goes that idea again. And they're soon on their way to stop Skolex from mass-producing destroyer robots and monopolizing the same. The G-Mobile even turns into a rocket car. And they soon catch up with the limousine. The fake inspector is separated from Skolex and goes to fight the original inspector at a yellow bridge. Now, it's supposed to be an epic battle, but both their gadgets keep getting in the way to the point where it's hilarious. Shut up and dance! On the other hand, the G-Mobile has closely followed the limo to the building. And both cars even try to throw each other off the road while on the way to the point. Where the G-Mobile ends up regurgitating a hell of a lot of candy. Now, Brenda's captured by Skolex and the Gadget Mobile calls the inspector on his smartwatch, the 1999 edition. Penny also joins in to do some detective work of her own. She finds Sykes trying to flush the evidence, which is the stolen foot, down the toilet. She distracts him by tapping into his buried emotions about his childhood. Next thing you know. Next thing you know. Meanwhile, Skolex is trying to board a helicopter while keeping Brenda captive. But before they take off, the real inspector shows up by flying the rotors out of his hat. Well, he outsmarted that fake copy at the bridge, separating body and head and tossing it into the water. And now he's faced with rescuing Brenda from a helicopter. He manages to break the handcuffs holding her by firing a pin randomly. And then she jumps on his back as he's hanging precariously from that helicopter. They're thrown towards the building by Skolix's bad piloting. And as they're free-falling, Inspector Gadget tries all sorts of go-go combos to slow that descent. Or cushion that fall, at least. Eventually, an umbrella pops out and they crash softly. Well, Skolex isn't that far behind and lands into the Gadget Mobile's laps, if you know what I mean. The police arrive with the chief at the head. And just when Gadget's about to be accused for everything, Sykes, who has been Skolex's right-hand man, confesses to everything his boss did. Apparently, Penny's an aspiring criminal psychologist in the making. Later on that night, the inspector kisses the girl of his dreams. And it's Brenda, while the fireworks are going off in the air. Thanks for sticking through the recap. This was Inspector Gadget, 1999 American superhero comedy. Directed by David Kellogg and written by Carrie Aaron and Zach Penn. The film stars Matthew Broderick, Rupert Everett, Michelle Trachtenberg, and Dabney Coleman. Also playing was Jolie Fisher. See you around.